<sighs> oh, hi everybody. So, I should go do a quick recap. <sighs> around 8pm and then we went to Africa so it was our first um, our first camping trip uh, and our first camping expedition as a family so Pops and I don't want to and my partner is and our child obviously has never gone camping so as long as we were just trying it out and so I figure late on Friday at 8 8 ish 8 9 p.m. So in Lily and you like because we drive around we drive in a in a small hatchback. So in Lily is like it was so bad, it was so bad. Um and actually we realized once we were here that we were the the campsite is the furthest one from the main roads so if i had, if if you know in these camp places Alapa, they don't always put things um on the internet and stuff or if you like you call it internet they don't put they don't make a nice website or nice pictures and it doesn't so it's hard to pick something that looks shady even on the website so you pick the nicest one but the nicest one that i found i found Dubana. it's actually dead smack in the middle of like of the gravel roads so had we actually gone to another one it's near the future to the tar roads so it would have been a shorter distance to drive from the the campsite to the tar road um so yeah we really struggled with getting here because we drive around in a hatchback so linda we school when it really needs uh it would be great to have like a double cab or any suv but came to Swigile and then we got here and we set up our tent for the first like we set up tent for the first time. So class it hang and then the city again went Thursday and then staying it and then Thursday got um in then you need to pour water on it three times. So it can a man's yome calling a man's yome calling a man's because no banana like in as would leak his shot and fear glenda when you because apparently like all the substances and the chemicals that they use to make it waterproof you need to first water it first before you, you use the tent otherwise the first time it, get, it gets water it might leak so you need to water it before you go see they get this they get it in there and then then we got home at thursday night we we watered it classic vogue same again on friday we watered it and then around 12 p.m on friday we watered it and then we packed it up and we came to to, to came camping and then get more like a big Friday. It's a big in the day too. So we don't have so we bought one stretched one stretch bed because my partner he loves his creature comforts. So we're like we're buying him basically the stretch tent because I mean the stretch bed because we didn't have it in budget. And then I'm we sleep on the floor because I like sleeping on the floor and get my child care with So okay. So kind of thing camping bag, sleeping bag, don't do because we were just like if we just have the tent and the stretch bed, which is the bare necessities, let's just keep it and we have a, a thing and we have a camping chair. So these are the bare necessities must take it, we just born back banja. So we had two one thick blanket, one comforter blanket, and another one be in a comforter. And then we to throw like three or four of those. So because he's the guy, you know these guys, they don't bring a lot of clothes because they assume that they'll be fine. Didn't bring a jacket. The one pants that she, he had man's so you know, he was forced to uh, sleep in his thing in his boxer shorts he didn't bring a lot of clothes pants <laughs> 
ni throw then upana wa mge ni ala le pezu ni throw yu asa koto asa koto la ebsu kumda kaba wale kwele um so okay yeah it was a rough night the first night we got so cold my partner had to get off his stretch bed as well as anti pants because we had to kind of maximize on the blankets so we all needed to just share the blankets we all had instead of spreading them around so my partner was cold i was cold my partner i was warm the whole body how my feet were freezing cold and i had a problem with cold feet so my feet were freezing cold um my partner was just cold energy in general only person who wasn't cold was, was our child we kept kicking the blankets away so i can't slide first of all because get four year olds they like kicking blankets away but secondly it was just such a mess yo the first night was so rough so the first night was rough we woke up in the morning and we like yeah no we need to restructure the next day <sighs> So, um, you ask him that I was wearing uh, these socks into a matter of mouth and don't do God, I hate God, all the man. Um, so we like, not the next day we need to restrict it. I came, Minus Bini, Saya, I can go away. Well, I suppose the first day is lovely. The first night, no, it's sunny, it's so cool, and then uh, Saturday, then Xen, Sibuka, I trust Sibuka, Sibuka, you're a cable engine. We are talking about banana water and banana. And then we would cut the label because guys, we've never camped before. So what we should have done was that we, what I noticed when I was looking around is that every place with trees, the grass didn't have um frost. It wasn't frosted over uh, wherever there was a tree on top of the frost. So if we had put our tent underneath a tree, Geba, we were protected from the frost because you know the 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 tree protects from the frost. So. So okay. Um so okay. Uh so okay. So okay. So my pattern is crafting, so I feel like I should do meza up on the Emily Lueni. So I should also say to me, I don't mind the end of the salad. We are going to go to the showers. I'm going to go to the showers. I'm going to go to the showers. I'm going to go to the showers. But um, it's what it's doing now. Um, uh, it's freezing cold, so, but around 7, 8 o'clock, it starts warming up. So like about warm, so like it's not so bad in terms of the temperatures. So yeah, as the day went by, it gets quite, it gets quite warm. Like right now, it's what, what time? It's ten past ten, and it's quite hot actually. So, gamandila badani niyongi. So yeah, around ten. Sick, see, and in the end, we was with she. I am going to camp inside. So she has only those arrows. Kule mo doeni sa mani kengu. Yo, I can't tell you how much. Good, 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 good. So as in the end, the end, the last one, the other, the one side is a little better, but it's long. 
and then the other side is rough but it's short so it nice like see us and get a long end because when we were told by the the owners of the camping site that it's better to use that route if we're in the hatchback but said plus each one will be able to learn by the info challenge so we're like no let's try it out the shorter one that the 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 camp owner said we must use yeah do we not regret it I walked and I was still walking faster than the car. That's how bad the roads are. That road is like it's big. So the side of the world in or at least the side of South Africa in Bumala, like the roads are so the, the rock the the I mean, you know the, the ground is full of rocks and boulders. It's not like you know other places we'll figure yes it's gravel road but it's quite soft and sandy you know here it's like there's it's full of rocks so when you're driving around it's quite dangerous for a car you literally need to drive as slow as you can because you're gonna hit the rocks so slowly slowly i think it's about what a seven kilometer drive to the main road from from the camping site but it took us about an hour to get there and I yeah so I decided to get out of the car and do my steps okay same as so I'm 10,000 steps I'm going have I tell it have I tell it I'm going to have it so I don't want to do it I'm going to be in five steps I'm going to be in five steps shit there's fresh water. There's fresh water running here. Let me imagine. Let me imagine my puppies. I wonder how fresh it is coming, boy. Oh, it's quite fresh. It's very fresh. We eventually, after an hour, got to the other side. And on the way, like I said before, I was so upset because I realized by now there were other camping sites that were closer to the main road. So we could have stayed there. But and they were nice. They had rivers and stuff. But I was focusing on the website. So all you depended on is the website. And if the website is crappy or there's no website, then you're never gonna go and find the place. So okay, anyway. So we got into the main road. Credit to the South African government, the main roads are amazing. Our intention was to go and do e, e, look at the case because we've been to the Stackfontein case. So this one about my comparison between Stackfontein case and um, the Sudala case. So we went to the Sudala caves and get cross finger pain. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to pain. I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to new girl, new girl, new girl, clean. I just get to the caves. Okay, now. Okay, now. I'm going to go to the end of the Stackfontein. 
Eine Ambianz. Caves, okay. It's very lucky. Just as we were arriving, about we arrived about five or so minutes before the next tour, and it all year too, there were about four or five of us in our group to go into the caves. So we we're very lucky with the caves. I must speak. I get oh, it was so beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. Also, the caves, and I actually found that I I I find them more beautiful than uh, the the Stefantine caves in Joburg. Um, because they're very expensive, they're very big, you know, like inside, it's very expensive and big and just beautiful. It feels like it's a museum. Not necessarily in Donje, that was just there, like it just feels nicer. Um, and it was it's okay. Uh, I, I found that I liked the Stefan Caves tour guide more than I did the one that we found here at Sudwala. Um, and I like the fact that it's Udwala Caves, one of the things that they, the, the stories that they tell about Udwala Caves is a story of um, how the Swati people were running away from a, 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 a an, um, an enemy and so they decided to hide in the caves and then you know, so then they used the caves as a hideout and then there's also something like some rock that you can bang on and it sounds like a bell and they were using that bell as an alarm system if there were any intruders coming in so i really like that story of Isudwala uh, caves as part of the tour guide and over here we have this formation this one is a flowstone formation it forms from slow dripping water which deposits calcium in layers that's why it's in a structure it's porous and when you hit this flowstone here, the noise that it produces, the vibrations, travels through the dolomite rock at the rate of 1,500 meters per second. You can almost hear the hollow noise it makes from any point inside where we do our normal tour. Even from the outside, you can still hear it depending on how hard you hit it. And because of the noise this flowstone here is able to make, this one specifically was thus used as an alarm system by the Swazi people who were using these caves as refuge in the early and mid 1800s. And it is named Somkuva's Gong after the leader of the Swazi people who were using the cave as a hideout. So good people, I'll just hit the gong here a few times and demonstrate so you can hear the sound that it produces afterwards. You can feel free to try it if you wish to. First, I'll hit the Dolomite rock here. You'll hear it doesn't make much of a sound, just normal rock sound as you can hear for yourself. Not wizard or just normal rock sound. But then our flowstone here, yeah. from whichever point I hit, and the harder I hit it, the louder it becomes. So you see good people, the time the Swazi people were using the cave as a hideout, whenever they were to spot intruders trying to sneak in or come into the cave, whoever would be left there on guard at the entrance would simply run to the flowstone here, hit it, and alert the others hiding inside that we have intruders coming. So good people, if ever among you there's someone who'd love to try the gong, you can feel free to try it afterwards and we'll proceed furthermore with our tour. I know someone who just sanitized the <laughs> 
It's a stalactite, this one. Yeah. It's a baby stalactite. So it's gonna grow bigger? It's still growing, yes, wow. man. But mostly, this part of the cave, you'll find that most of the formations this side are mostly active around summer because that's when we experience lots of mm -hmm. rainfalls. It starts dripping even this side. But uh, then at the moment, this one, no drops like are like emerging from the cracks. No, not at all, yes, uh, ma'am. This is how they grow. And looking at this one, if you may remember, over there I said the average growth rate for these formations inside the cave is 2.5 centimeters every 100 years. Mm. So looking at this one up here, who can try and guess how old it might be? Yeah, that was close. Mm. Still close. Yeah, yes, <laughs> approximately oh. 300 years old, still active and growing, just depending on the amount of drops it receives from the rainfall outside. Because you see, good people, after it rains, as the rainwater outside slowly seeps in through the topsoil, which is rich in composition on account of bacterial decay, the water absorbs a quantity of carbon dioxide, resulting in a formation of a carbonic acid. That's why the water percolating through in the dolomite rock is acidic. And when it comes into contact with the calcium in the dolomite rock, it slowly dissolves the calcium. That's why the drops of water which emerges from the cracks are rich in calcium. And in order for each stalactite to grow, each drop of water which emerges from the cracks up there should remain up there for several hours, giving it enough time to dry up and deposit a ring of layer around the circumference of the stalactite. Then the next drop that emerges does the same thing, drop after drop, that's how the stalactite grows and it forms this hollow tube you see up here which slowly fills up and if we were to cut or break this stalactite up here it has rings like a tree it's called a concentric structure so therefore the extra drops of water which falls to the ground carries extra calcium to the floor then the stalagmite eventually starts building up from below going up but unfortunately no stalagmite has been forming here because i think you'll find over the years people have been stepping on it immediately the drops go down there because you can see from here, it differs from the rest of the ground. Okay. But what I really, really, really didn't like about the Sudwana Cave was the fact that everything is set up to accommodate international tourists and to make international tourists comfortable and to understand the concept like the, the caves it makes the story it's a very international type of uh, approach that they took at the expense of uh, of african stories and of african authenticity so for example down in Aparate cave they there's a section where they like they are they are yes they are bats in the in the cave but they're not vampire bats and then they put batman and they're like but you can look around i'm sure you'll find batman in the in the cave so it's a very american very very european i mean very western uh type of thing to say inside a cave in africa so I really didn't like that and that was just one of about six or seven things that like little things that they would write around put Casper in there and do, do, do. so a lot of the things the, the way they've set up the, the they've curated the tour inside the caves is very 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 western centric they make sure Bana they are accommodating um, um, uh, uh, western or American or European um, tourists more than they do South African and African um, African tourists so I really didn't like that about that and they it points to the trouble that the tourism industry in South Africa faced when COVID and lockdown happened because they set up their, their tourism to a cater to international people and not to South African people and then they found themselves wanting when the borders were closed for international people and all they had was us they were left with just us Bana. they must we can, we are the only people that can can go visit these things and they've never catered to our needs and you can see it in that cave so i really hated that about those caves i hated it so much but besides that the caves are beautiful um but the the tour is much shorter than the stefantin cave tour the stefantin cave tour is so long and and you wind and you go up and you go down and you go left and you go right and you you crawl on your on your knees and then you stand up and then you are because taking upstairs yeah, in there, and there's a stuff on them, which is nice because it feels like more value for money. But um, but I just liked the feel of the of the steps of the Sutwala caves more.
I guess the back is super like his. Um, okay, but um, I didn't finish the talk because, okay, as always, I was thinking to my child. I had her on my back, and um, she decided that she doesn't like dark, dark spaces, so she decided to and she wants to go and pee in the middle of the tour. So I had to leave the tour and um, take her to the bathroom, and I couldn't go back inside, but it was almost at the end of it, so it's fine. But I was pissed, I was so annoyed because I'm just like, I came here to see these kids, and now I can't finish the tour because my dad here on my back wants to go and pee. But my partner finished the tour, and then he finished and he came back. So again, we'll go the when we left with my with my daughter we had told her about the reason why we are coming here is that we are taking her to the dinosaur park um so actually the reason why she didn't even want to stay in the caves for so long for long that's why she wanted she started talking about she wants to pee is because she wanted to go to the dinosaur park so then we were like okay let's go to the dinosaur park now when we tried to go to the dinosaur park we go past an area for zip lining so i'm like to my partner no he must zip line and he's like okay but my partner's a scary cat <laughs> he's, he think he's, he doesn't like heights and, and adrenaline things he's not much of an adrenaline junkie so we like okay he must go and then after a little bit of convincing he didn't need a lot of convincing but a bit of convincing he was like okay fine i'll do it then they were like okay we must pay so as i was about to go and pay they were like but if you want you can also go with that your child you can also go with your child and like oh children also go she's only four years like, yeah no she can go at four years old so okay i pay for all three of us then i go back again to get us uh, harnessed and my child get, didn't want to get harnessed because she wants to go to the dinosaur so i had to tell her that no if we get in this supply and we're going to go to the we're going to get to the dinosaur area at the bottom of the supply so we need to zip line in order to get to the dinosaur area okay then she was excited okay okay Oh, well, she wasn't excited, but she said, okay, fine. Then we harnessed her. Okay, okay, this is the she skipped this one. Go. Let's go. Where are you going? What are you doing? I'm a pa. So, Papa, pa, ne, What's please. the heaviest car you've taken on? Things of Papa Nepis. Now, so I'm as a papa, and now I'm as a person down for random. Now, I'm and then we get to the top so we have to climb upstairs to get to the top where you actually get on the zip line when we get there so my understanding the reason why i bought the ticket is that i thought that we were going to zip i was going to zip line with my child together she was just going to be harnessed onto me and then we we're gonna zip line together when i get back get up there because i was the la last one on last one to the top because i was walking with my child they're like mama 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 okay so so she says so she says Nana so I'm so my bizarre no put it colour and then so she's one who quelly now and then where she because Munana also and was a munana as well colour cool pies and I'm like, excuse me what? Yeah, so where she's after because I know mana I heard mana and nana and then my partner would follow us. Like no 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 mama it's a bit scanchal. Nana Fayla and then a professional guide on proceedings are up. Bessie will be me and then when I can always land in up. Yo just like my child don't agree to that but i'm like okay fine it's fine let's just do it because we're here now and other people are waiting on us now so let's just do it so i put her on and i put her and i explained to her explain about that this man is going to go with you and he's going to slide down with you and then i'll be there just now 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 okay like say say i'm going to go with you they go down like that thing is so high and you know we is the that are that have heights you we are doing a lot because you we 
and then that that's what brings fear you know it's all the 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 the, the, the thoughts that you have about the, all the the bad things and the bad eventualities that there could be in the world so that's what scares you but like when i got up there like i was immediately like just tie me in because i'm just like i need to get to my child because wherever she is she's crying and she's upset that we've, we've abandoned her so just put me on this damn thing so i can just go like fear and i realized then man i don't care even if i must fall i don't care all i need is to get to my child now <laughs> so they tied me up quickly and they were like Zoom! so like when you're going ah, the first time you skip ah, but and then after uh, like literally like two or three seconds you realize oh this is fun and you just slide down and you see the view and the view is just absolutely gorgeous like when you zip lining down it's absolutely beautiful and it's quite a, a short trip and it just feels comfortable with actually when i got off um on the other side it literally felt like like i was working in a mine or something and get go go um the by zip lining i was basically just getting from one shaft to another shaft that's the only reason why i was using e e zip lining. so they were mind it like I, I wasn't scared at all at all at all i didn't mind i guess they shake and figure if i don't want to figure my child is curled up in, in a ball like this i got no tears but she wasn't crying she was just like sitting like oh, call them down now and she was fine and then we had to zip line again back to the other side so you zip line that way and then you zip line right back so we zip line but then we always been in class take us or quail always been here and she's done it before now she's not scared anymore i'm telling about myself with dinosaurs now she's not scared anymore she's the one getting up and holding on to the guide so that the guide can take her to the other side and then we can get this done and, and dust it so that was really nice like the zip line we didn't expect to do it we had no plans to do it but we got there we did it and it was fun uh, then Kegongo after that then we walked up and walked and walked and walked and then Safira I was like dinosaurs like my, my my child was just annoyed the entire time we were at Sudwala Caves. We were doing zip lining. She was just grumpy, just grumpy the entire time because all she came here for. She came to Mpumalang, all she came to Mpumalang for is to go and see dinosaurs anything else was not on her agenda so basically we're just wasting her time and then i guess she has no time for this nonsense because she came for dinosaurs so eventually we went to the dinosaur area i remember so the dinosaur area spatale literally woke up i'm so excited so the dinosaur park is really cute it's for kids it's really for kids like you know if i if i know i'm not going to pass you so go to pass you so you want except the fact that you know you kind of just get a sense you're all these dinosaurs were so big based off based off of you know our size as human beings like they were just massive we, were ne we would probably would never have survived them but again apparently one on the account detain you with the them that you born up like but for children it's absolutely amazing like my child was having the time of her life the money um so don't get up and i have make a paper no banner and then <laughs> He referencing in that our professor alone was against don't she? When born by Paulo, no one has been your nice corner, no one has So yeah, she really enjoyed herself. So it's great for children. That area is fantastic for children. They have a lot of fun. Like there was another family that was it was two kids and a mother and a father, and like the children were just having the time of their lives. Poof it's just statues like there's nothing it hit it's just this is dead from she's a, a, a massive dinosaurs and small dinosaurs and whatnot i can't detain it but the like, children just love it it's just it, it's amazing for children so okay yeah so and then we then decided to go to the butterfly effect area 
Hibis is dinner, but the time we were hungry. So we thought there was a food area there. So if there was a food area, then we would have been able to eat and then see the butterfly effect thing. But when we got there, there was no food area. Butterfly and don't, don't. So I just did a quick look at it. It's very beautiful. Like if you're interested in things like that, like butterflies and stuff, oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, so because there was no food, we wrapped it up and we decided to come back to camp. But like basically, yeah, the Sudwala thing, it's just so well put together. It's such a nice experience. Yeah, for now, because you don't get na we are yapa dal. So don't get in the cave section. Mother, father, child, zonge bonge, pay for yourself. Don't get na wa kota ina so action. Mother, father, child. Zonge bonge pay for yourself. Kau nge na kwa kwa ziplining. Mother, father, child. Zonge bonge pay for yourself. Um. Oh no no no. Good dinosaur. I'm lying. I think under six you don't pay. Under six years old children don't pay. And then abanye bingo ba ya padar. But the point is like every like it's all in one place. Kodwa all of them all of it you need to pay for it. It's not free. Like there's it's not like by now you pay you pay at the gate. And then like a cold city, it's not like cold city where you pay at the gate and then all the rides are kind of inclusive. No, Payana, every different experience is paid for, but like I really felt like all of it was definitely worth it. It was definitely worth our money, it was definitely worth our time, it was definitely worth driving all the way from Joburg to here. Like, we really enjoyed ourselves, we really enjoyed ourselves, um, and it felt like a, a family type of. Thing. like everybody all of us got something out of it i got the keys my partner got the zip lining which i also enjoyed my child got the dinosaur uh, the dinosaur experience so and then the butterfly thing as well the butterfly section we didn't see much of it but now it looked like it would have been fun had we had the time and the energy to actually do it so it was really really fun um then guess a boy again i get pull so this night is Saturday. On by now, I say it's Mela. We say as we go in there, lap as as me go there, binge. So we definitely gonna do better. So I, so leg I'm talking about. The leg, the leg. Like I, I had four pair, four pants plus ne 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 gowns and a pants. I'm a push. I had four pants plus tights and pants. And then uh, I had my jacket on, I had my, uh, my gown on, I had um, three uh, three tops of pants, and I had my um, pajama top, pajama top on as well. And then then it's like when I had two socks, so I had one thin socks and then the thermal socks plus my eggs. I slept in my axes on because I was just like I'm not playing around. I learned my lesson the first night. I'm not trying to freeze again. Freezing is not my agenda, Blonia. I mean go suku. Go busugu y agenda yami. I demena and frost. I demena and go dollar. Oh mugla la de then we have a so I can and as long as I love pants at this time we didn't even bother with the strength stretch uh bed. So I guess I can up and go any pants on the floor. That's Lila Sayam. Hoy can you start the two get this time? I get the ten thing I packed it was um there was a lot of it was watery. I don't know what was happening because the first night we didn't get watery. Because that is all yeah, it got watery, so I don't know by now what the physics of it is that what is what the physics of that are. But yes, Lele will too. I want you to enjoy your Nana. I also want to have some fun with my family. I just want to be in this seventeen. Go to fun with my family. I want to be in London. I want to be in the house. I want to be in the house. But if you want to be in the house, you can be in the house. 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 And we're planning to go to a and in Zaloye Lang to see if we can find something there. But like I've really enjoyed you know this and the best part like of, of the camping itself for me is just to exam when you just sit there and all you have is just your tea and only Lava Pam Guaco and a Kenche and just chilling there and just command it. It's just calm and it's relaxed. So yeah, I think we're definitely gonna do more camping because I really, really enjoyed it. It was really nice. Um, but yeah, so we said I'm trying to cross the road and see in Zalo Yelangas. Yeah, but so we're gonna just close up our camping, our camping tent, 
The Bakoni ruins are a provincial heritage site in the Mpumalanga province in South Africa. Its neighboring town, Mgwenya, is 10 kilometers away. The site was declared a national monument on 18 April 1975 and is a heritage site recognized by the South African Heritage Resource Agency. It's unfortunate that this is a heritage site, but it's so poorly taken care of. I mean, it should be criminal the way that the government has neglected this place. Um, the only way we were able to kind of get a view of what this might be like or what so the structure and all of them put together might be like was to take our drone up and take pictures at the top. The ruins make up what was part of a large complex stone walling system built by the Bogoni people. While the exact age of the ruins is unknown, the Bogoni people are estimated to have built stone walled settlements around the early 16th century. The site is assumed to have been used for cattle enclosures, agricultural terracing, and housing for the Bogoni people. This has been hypothesized due to the circular shaping of stone walling that characterizes the site. So from our visit, we really do hope that um, the next time we go there, there'll be a change in terms of, you know, the government in taking charge and taking lead of actually protecting this heritage site and protecting this national history um, of the Bogoni people and really history of South Africa in general. But we were really disappointed by the state of it. There was nothing there. Like we could barely, I did, we didn't even find in Zalo Yenilanga because it's just so difficult to find everything because there's just no care um, for these sections. So we found this, we stumbled on this one. And yeah, the only really, the only way we were really able to get perspective on what it might have looked like was through the drone images that we took. Telephone. <laughs> 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 I'm going to say bye-bye. Oh, bye-bye. Yes, bye.